Let's talk yes, midterms. Always- Midterm mania is upon us. Former President Obama is campaigning in Arizona with Democrats as the races are tightening up. Let's take a look at what's happening in America's wonderful state, Arizona. Last night in a speech at Washington's Union Station, President Biden argued that democracy itself is at risk. Former President Barack Obama had a similar message at a rally in Arizona, but our polling shows that right now the economy is the number one issue for voters. Good morning. Inflation here in the Phoenix metro area has grown at the highest rate in the country over the last year, so the economy is on every voter's minds. Republicans are putting the economy, border security, and crime at the center of their message to voters. Democrats, including President Obama, are arguing that democracy itself is at stake. One thing is clear, and that is this, this increasing habit of demonizing political opponents. So I get why people are angry. I'm gonna be honest, like, I don't think this is that good of rhetoric. I think people are angry. They're gonna only get more and more angry. They're gonna get more and more fired up. Republicans have the means and the interest and also uh more of these like galvanized idiots in their fucking fan base and they will continue to do this shit i think like uh calls for civility at this stage are just kind of silly you're basically just saying like oh let's do civility let's do civility like in theory i get it i understand where you're coming from but like you need to have a a better solution the theoretical democracy that we need to defend is this uh profound good things are fucked up people are angry recognize that and then direct their focus on the actual things that are making people angry. The actual things that are, are are causing so much oppression that people are experiencing. Republicans, yeah, trans people need to be stopped at all costs, including violence. Obama, we need to stop demonizing other political factions. Like, sure, like you're right, but you're only right in theory. You're not at a polite dinner party with the rest of the, you know, bicoastal elites that you hang out with, Barack Obama. You know, this is the real world. And in the real world, people are fucking angry. People are mad. And the more mad they get, the more the Republican Party takes advantage of that anger and redirects it towards marginalized communities that haven't done anything that are also experiencing the same forms of struggle the same forms of marginalization and then some on top of that because of the fact that they're like trans or gay or black or an undocumented immigrant this notion that like oh man i'm gonna call for civility yeah it probably works well for the white suburban voters that are swinging every now and then going republican and then maybe saying okay uh the republicans have gone too far maybe i'll vote democrat it's like literally the the 50,000 people in each suburb that you are tailoring your messaging around. It's crazy. But Phoenix, I am here to tell you that tuning out is not an option. Rallying. I think people don't want to be pushovers either. Why would you want to be constantly getting pushed over by the playground bully? And then like your fucking call is to be like, hey, um, you're being a big meanie right now. Like at a certain point, you got to fucking grab that kitchen. You got to grab that fucking lunch uh, tray and, and smack the bully in the fucking face. Okay. In a, in a matter of, as a matter of self-defense, of course. You know what I mean? Rhetorically speaking, Democrats don't ever want to do that. They're just like, oh my God, they're being so mean. They're being so mean to us. Why don't we get back to civility? And I think that that also plays a role in in the minds of a lot of Democratic voters where they're like, why the fuck are we voting? Why are we voting? It's like, if we're voting defensively, then defend us. Democrats engage in defensive voting. Republicans oftentimes engage in offensive voting. They vote for something. And that something is policing and hurting what they perceive are their political opponents, what they see as the main reason for all the oppression and struggle that they feel in their lives it's not their bosses it's not the system that they exist under it's actually the uh democratic party and uh you know 18 year old queer teenagers learning about gender theory for the first time in their lives in college those are the people that run society those are the reasons why you're terrified of going to the fucking doctor those are the reasons why you don't have 400 extra dollars in emergency funds in your pocket you know it's the fucking starbucks barista and as far as like inflation goes as far as cost of living goes cost of living is up there are a lot of problems that americans face across the board no matter what their fucking political perspective is no matter what their politics are every american is feeling the hurt when inflation comes around uh, i'll tell it to you like this okay when you get a fucking a one percent increase in your salary in comparison to the prior year okay republican or democrat doesn't matter you get a one percent increase in your fucking salary from uh the the last year but inflation is at six percent well that means you just got a pay cut you didn't get a pay raise you got to pay cut. That's not a pay raise. That's a pay cut. And a lot of people felt that way. That transcends above party lines. When you put your head on the pillow at night, when you're about to go to sleep, the things that you're thinking of aren't like trans teenagers, uh, 
pissing and shitting in fucking kitty litter boxes. They're thinking about how they're going to make ends meet. Including Secretary of State Katie Hobbs, who is in a deadlocked race with Republican candidate Carrie Lake for governor. Lake, a former longtime TV news anchor, has embraced former President Donald Trump's false oh, accusations man. about there the 2020 election. We are going to restore faith, honesty, and integrity in our elections in Arizona. Yeah. Republican Senate candidate Blake Masters has also raised doubts about the 2020 election results. He's hoping for a come-from-behind win against Democrat incumbent Senator Mark Kelly. I've never met a more lizard-like motherfucker than Blake Masters, dude. Straight up. America has a lot of interesting demographics, okay? And one of those interesting demographics in the political arena is school shooters, and Blake Masters is fulfilling that void, okay? A federal judge has issued an order aimed at halting reports of voter suppression prohibiting armed people, people wearing body armor, from monitoring ballot drop boxes here in Arizona. The tensions around the vote itself remain very high, Gail. I mean, this shit's insane, and it's only going to get more insane, you know? It's just, it's only going to get worse from here on out. But here are 48 states uh, that have election deniers running for office in the fucking midterms. 48 states, bro. Good to be here, Gail. Our CBS News review of every federal and statewide race shows up the nearly 590 Republican candidates. There are 308 who we categorize as election deniers. Look at this. In the U.S. House, it's 238 of 436. It's a majority. In the U.S. Senate, again, it's a majority. In gubernatorial races, same number. In Secretary of State races nationwide, it's nearly half. And Secretaries of State would help administer. 12 of the 27 GOP Secretary of State candidates think that Donald Trump won the election and it was stolen. That is a psychotic number. That's almost... Bro, that's almost half, dude. Almost half the GOP Secretary of State candidates don't believe in that. Listen, do you want to know why this is important? Because the GOP Secretary of State is the guy who runs and processes the voter rolls. If your take is just like, yeah, the election was stolen, actually, and we got to do something about it, you are somehow more unhinged than the Secretary of States that are in the uh, Republican Party that already have done everything to suppress the voters in black and brown neighborhoods, in poor neighborhoods. It's literally like their job as the Republican Secretary of State in every state is to straight up make sure that it is as difficult as possible to vote if you're in a poor neighborhood. If you're in a, if you're in college, if you're in a poor neighborhood, if you're in a black neighborhood, if you're in a brown neighborhood, their job is quite literally to make sure that it is as difficult as, uh, it's as difficult as humanly possible for you to be able to go out and vote. That's their whole job. Among the 308 are candidates from 48 different states across the country, and it includes Republican incumbents funniest thing that someone just pointed out in the chat was that like it's not like republicans ever fucking mention solutions to the inflation either right they just say it's democrats fault it's democrats fault and if you actually ask the republican what to do for the inflation they would literally say tax cuts yeah their goal their their, their solution to fucking inflation in the republican party democrat is literally to to do more inflation tax cuts for the wealthy that's beware of the soccer moms a new wall street journal poll shows the gop getting a major boost from white suburban women ahead of the midterms who make up 20% of the electorate. This key group favors Republicans by 15 percentage points. That's a 27 point swing from August. Yeah, that's, you know where that's coming from, right? Is all the fucking like, they're transing your children shit, okay? The Karen Brigade has left the building. The Karen Army has left the building. I've already said this. If you want to have a powerful coalition, you need to have Karens involved. If you don't have care, if you don't have the Karen vote, you're fucked. That's, by the way, I mean, Polling is whatever, okay? Not always going to be consistent. It's not always going to be great. Let's keep it a buck 50, though. That is a higher percentage of white women than Donald Trump versus Hillary Clinton. Donald Trump versus Hillary Clinton was at least like, you know, 46, 54. That is literally like double. That's crazy. Democrats seem to be asleep at Biden's events. So you with me? Yeah. Okay. Oh, man, that's crazy. I can't believe that we're having such a hard time winning over white women when we got Debbie Wasserman Schultz. Why, dude? Why is the Democratic Party so fucking annoying? They're literally just like, we have to have these fucking losers. It may... Debbie Wasserman Schultz's existence within the Democratic Party unironically make me believe Hillary Clinton conspiracies. Come on, people. Let's wake up. We got the President of the United States in the house. Come on now. She's like my favorite Marge Simpson sister, right? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you know what I think, uh, Katie? I think maybe women are tired of being called racist. God, 
Debbie Washerman's uh, Schultz sucks, right? But Greg Gutfeld is so deeply just disliked by all of his colleagues, especially the women, that you can see it. Even when he tries to fucking go for a joke, look at the fucking reaction from the female colleagues there. Ow. And those guys are like, literally, they're Republican commentators on, at Fox News. They get fucking sexually harassed as a part of their job description. And even then, they have like a unique level of disdain for Greg Gutfeld. Jessica, you're a white woman or so you identify as. Um, is this more about married women versus single women? Because you have kids, that changes your filter. Suddenly it's about the price of baby food, not the price of an abortion. Uh, it takes, you know, abortion takes a backseat to applesauce. Yeah, bro. Everybody knows single women don't eat food because they're too busy spending all their money on abortion. Greg, you are so funny, dude. What a zinger. The woman understander has logged on dude that's a good one greg by the way ironic because like statistically speaking i think the majority of women that get abortions already have one child at least so it's not even true as far as what this dumbass is saying married women do also have abortions so that is something to note it is part well, of i think that's a valiant point jessica <laughs> thank you they could be uh, just as murderous as single women <laughs> oh my God. Bro, you don't think, yo, if Jessica had fucking balls, okay, she would turn around and be like, how many abortions have you paid for, you fucking piece of shit? Oh, wait, probably zero because you're an unfuckable loser, okay? And nobody wants to be around you. But she's not saying that. Just say it, bro. Pop off. She said her big issue is that she does not want to take her kids to the independent bookstore downtown mm -hmm. and have a guy mm -hmm. defecating mm -hmm. on the sidewalk in front of her children. Like, she's had it that's enough and she i think that women that. remember what i talked about with respect to crime americans and their analysis of crime is not necessarily crime as the way that uh the the police track it right it's not about like grand larceny grand theft auto homicides it's about what you see in front of you it's about the manifestations of crime and seeing poor people, homeless people in your everyday existence, or at least seeing them on television when you live in the suburbs and seeing how the big city is like full of homeless people or whatever, is the reason why a lot of these people think like, oh, crime is on the rise. Crime is on the rise. Crime is on the rise. That's where a lot of this comes from because like people are just naturally terrified by the manifestation of poverty because they also intrinsically understand that poverty equals crime. Okay. Now, of course, the fucking solution to this is by drastically changing the way that we look at housing and trying to fix the housing crisis by increasing the availability of affordable housing by uh, maybe even in the short term implementing price uh, controls on currently available housing, making it illegal to have Airbnb properties. You know what I mean? But we're not going to do that because that's at the heart of, of uh, independent wealth building and the way that people comprehend wealth building and wealth generation in the United States of America it's through owning a house. It's an ad. Asset. So it's just not gonna happen. And you go mental health first, says Swizzlefish. Dog, what mental health? What mental health, man? You can't even get fucking insulin if you're diabetic without having to pay boatloads of money for it. And you're over here talking about mental health. Even in countries with socialized medicine, mental health is still seen as like a you know additional funding. No, if you're homeless, your first priority is housing first. First priority is putting someone uh underneath like sustainable permanent shelter. That will fix a big chunk of your mental health problems. Obviously not all of it. There's going to be plenty of people who still need uh, a, a tremendous amount of treatment. But that stability of, of having permanent shelter is going to dramatically improve your mental health. Yeah, I covered my place because they're taking pictures and all that stuff. I mean, this is what we've come to in America, huh? These guys call themselves patriots? Really? The effects of election conspiracy theories are already on full display here in the swing state of Arizona. It's time for no Arizona! Men stalking vote drop boxes, prompting voters to hide their identities and even cover their license plates as they go to vote. If a guy's standing over there, he's got his face covered, he's got, and he's armed, what's that tell you? They don't want you to vote. Ballot drop boxes are the target of conspiracy theorists who falsely believe that they were used to steal the 2020 election. It's called 2,000 Mules. Central to all of this is the movie 2,000 Mules. It was released in May, and Trump even hosted a screening of it at Mar-a-Lago. The movie falsely claims that so-called mules are casting hundreds or thousands of votes at drop boxes. The organizer behind many of the drop box watchers said she was inspired by the movie to take action. We believe that there was something stolen in 2020, and just because you don't, we do. Yeah, you think that, like, the election wasn't stolen, but guess what? I'm fucking insane. So 
How about that? That's nice of you to, to act like the election wasn't stolen. When I watch a documentary and I'm also fucking crazy. Checkmate, okay? It's just flat out insane. It's voter intimidation. If you talk to people who don't believe that the election was fair in 2020, uh, nine times out of 10, one of the first things they're gonna bring up is 2,000 mules. You've seen it? I yes. sure have. What do you think? I think- Very accurate. Very accurate, and I think it's, they're gonna try it again. We met Enola gay Bajinska and her son Roger outside an event for Carrie Lake, the Republican election denier running for governor of Arizona. They swear by the movie. How many times have you seen? Four times. I've watched it three times. Oh Republican my God. Ch bro, he watched it three times, bro. Why? Here's the I'm American, therefore my bastard opinion should be treated as if it's the truth doctrine again. Yeah, of course. The worst part about this is it's a fucking Dinesh D'Souza movie, okay? I mean, he's out of his fucking mind. Long hair star. Star. Thick Oh no, it's over. It's over. Boys, we're not winning an election ever, okay? Do you understand me? Bro, it's hard for me to keep saying, like, you should go out and vote when, like, nationally relevant Democrats are just doing this on the timeline. Like, this is just an own, dude. This is literally like, what are you doing? Bro, just stop. Just lean into the whiteness, okay? Don't do this shit. You're like a you're like a goofy, nerdy white guy. Don't. Don't try to do this. Don't do this. Watching Dems make TikToks that appeal to voters makes you not want to vote altogether. It's just so cringe. Which, by the way, continuing on with the cringe, this actually ties so perfectly with what the fuck was going uh, on. To push the Democrats' message to get out and vote, and I believe he's sitting on the floor oh. in this clip. <laughs> it's Monday night, and here's what's happened. B, what are you, what are you doing with, under my desk? Well, under the desk is kind of my thing. I mean... Yeah, but here's the thing. You can stay for now, but when it comes time to voting, you're going to have to get up. Oh, gosh. Yeah, what do you think about that? I oh. mean, the youth vote's a problem right now for Democrats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're going out in numbers to vote Republican. No, nah, they're just not voting. Shut the fuck up. Bro, that's so bad. Stop. I think these guys don't realize that, like, most people find them to be cringe anyway. So, like, they have to actively work against that. Like, it's a reality that I, I, I live with, okay? I've gotten lied about. I've had people lie about me for so fucking long as a consequence of, like, being a political commentator on the internet that, like, people are just now automatically are like, oh, Hassan, cringe. You have to work against it. You have to work against that every step of the way. You can't lean into it and do like cringe ass shit.